Hi, it's Markus Terran here from Orbitherm, and in today's video I will be explaining how to use thermal imaging to inspect pouch seals. Now let's take a look at the topics and what you can expect to learn from this video. I will be explaining what thermal sealing is, methods of sealing, the need for inspection, the importance of the inspection location, heat diffusion by conduction, give you an example application of an actual paper pouch sealing inspection, and discuss other challenges. But before I get started, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, click the bell icon and give us a thumbs up. We have a lot of things to cover in this video, so grab a coffee, get comfortable, and let's go. So how does thermal sealing work? For many packages in the food industry as well as pharmaceuticals and medical, there's the need to seal the package. This is often done with heat. And the heat is necessary to essentially melt two pieces of material together, could be plastics, or it could be some adhesive that's stuck on the other side of the lid that needs to be heat activated. So the heat can be generated in many different ways, um, which I will get into a little bit later in this presentation. And some of these methods are suitable for a continuous sealing process, and some of them are only suitable for like an index stop sealing, index stop sealing sort of process. There are several different methods of heat sealing available. Some of these are used for sealing in production lines as well as the manual sealing process. The most common ones found are direct heat transfer sealing, friction welding, ultrasonic welding, radio frequency or RF welding, laser welding, and last but not least, induction sealing. The need for inspection really depends on the application. Not every package seal is critical. Therefore, not every package sealing application requires rigorous inspection. Thermal imaging-based inspection systems are suited for critical applications only. Critical applications are applications in which a weak seal, an impartial seal, or even a small leak would lead to a significant issue. Sometimes these issues are related to product quality and have cosmetic reasons. Other times the risk is much higher, such as with maintaining sterility in a medical application. When deploying a thermal imaging system for package inspection, it is very important to determine what the best location is of the thermal camera. Typically, this is right after the sealing process. And this is due to the fact that the hot regions in this package seal typically spread to the colder regions. So if I'm inspecting too far down the line, the issue becomes that my heat signature gets very blurry with respect to the thermal image and I won't be able to pick out any sort of defects in the seal. This is mainly due to the different thermophysical properties of the packaging material, how thick it is, what sort of print is on there and other factors. So it is very important to understand the heat conduction transfer doing a package application and the best way to determine this is actually by experimental observation. To illustrate this effect better, let's take a look at this time sequence. These are thermal images taken right after a sealing process, with the upper left image starting at T0 and then going up to 0.6 seconds, 1.2, 1.8, 2.4, 3.0, and 3.6 seconds after the sealing process. What we can see is that we clearly lose definition the longer we wait after the sealing process. So if we, for instance, install a thermal camera too far down the line because we just can't access the sealing process, anywhere closer to the sealing machine, we will have the issue that a lot of information, a lot of thermal detail and possibly defects are getting blurred to a level where we may not be able to call it as a defective seal or not. Now let's take a look at the real world example of a paper pouch sealing application. So most applications are starting with a feasibility or an imaging study. And this is to prove out the thermophysical properties of the sealing process, because not every application will work. So what we see here in the image is a conveyor belt. We have a paper bag that is being sealed on the conveyor coming down. We have a proximity sensor here that triggers the thermal camera on the left to look at the sealing area of the bag seal. 
The bag is being sealed currently manually by an operator holding this into this fixture. And this whole setup here is an ultrasonic welding application to create the seal. The way that works is the bag has a pre-applied adhesive on it and the vibration of the ultrasound essentially melt the adhesive and therefore seal the bag. As with every imaging study, we need to consider which camera model to use. In this case, we have two models to choose from. It's the FLIR A35 with 320 by 240 pixels and a 25 degree lens, as well as the FLIR A615 with 640 by 512 pixels and a 25 degree lens as well. Both cameras will be mounted at the same working distance of 460 millimeters. That distance is the distance from the camera at the end of the lens to the bag at the time of trigger. What we really care for is getting enough pixels across the smallest feature size of interest. In this case, it would be the ceiling area or the ceiling seam. So we have measured that and it's, it has been determined to be an eighth of an inch or 3.175 millimeters. So for the first case, the FLIR A35, what that means if we divide the field of view in the horizontal um, over the number of pixels available, we have essentially eight inches over 320 pixels and if I do this in millimeters, it's 203.2 millimeters over 320 pixels. And I arrive at a resolution of 0.65, I'm sorry, 0.635 millimeters per pixel. Um, the smallest seal area is therefore 3.175 millimeters divided over 0.635 millimeters per pixel. And I end up with five pixels across the seal. That is kind of borderline for what I want to see. Um, and if we look at the other camera choice, we have uh, essentially twice the number of pixels um, because that camera has twice the resolution in one direction. And if we look at the full image, it's four times the pixel resolution. So let's take a look at how this actually works um, by taking a look at these thermal images taken from an actual sealed pouch. So what we have here in the upper left corner is the image taken with a A35 thermal camera. And um, the image um, looks a bit confusing um, to the untrained eye because it's really just showing heat. So the bag itself is hard to make out. What we see here is a couple of faint lines, kind of a double line that is due to the, to the actual built-in um, feature of how the bags are being sealed. It's intentional to have kind of a double seal here. We also see the bright spot here and that is a heat concentration in the seal. And this could have several reasons. Uh, one thing, it could be a concentration of adhesive. It could be a misalignment on the sealing fixture, or it could be also a folded over uh, piece of material there that created more friction. Um, all of those kind of things are possible because the sealing mechanism here is really ultrasound. So all of this could be a, a possible cause for this heat concentration here. But besides that, the, the mission here is to look for um, what sort of resolution is sufficient. Um, you know, can we use the FLIR A35 with a 320 by 240 pixel resolution or should we switch to a higher resolution camera? And this is the picture taken with the A615 with four times the spatial resolution compared to the A35 over there. And um, here we can see a picture taken from a different bag um, just because of the thermal signature that we can see here. And we also have a little bit of a heat concentration on one side here and something that looks a little bit colder here. And then we can make out this, this double line, generally speaking here. So this image obviously looks uh, quite a bit more favorable. So um, let's see when we zoom in to see what sort of uh, resolution do we have. So if we zoom in here on a pixel by pixel um, sort of level, this square shows us um, five by five pixels. And this is essentially the upper ceiling area, that faint line that we see up here, just zoomed in. And this is what five by five pixels look that we calculated beforehand. And if we look at the same image um, in comparison that was taken with the FLIR A615, we see here the zoomed in portion of the heat concentration and we see a, a lot more resolution. Obviously, a small area like this is 10 by 10 pixels. So I have a lot more granularity 
when I perform image processing uh, and look for heat distribution than I have with the image before. So just a little recap, since um, it may have not been very clear from the photograph from earlier to see um, what our test setup is like. So what we have here is an illustration, a side view of our test setup. We have the ultrasonic bag seal equipment here with that ultrasonic horn that the operator places the bag into. Uh, this horn comes down, exerts some pressure against the sealing area and starts the ultrasonic vibration. The vibration causes heat and it causes the adhesive to melt and uh, the pressure makes sure that the two halves of the open bag mouth, so to speak, are being uh, glued together. Now later on, this is going to be fully automated, but for this test setup, this is all done manually. Then we have the conveyor belt here where the operator places the bag onto. Um, and then we have a photocell or proximity sensor here that will trigger the bag um, always in the same location with respect to the camera, because as we said before, we wanted to examine the ideal time or point in time rather uh, at which we should um, take a thermal image from the seal to make sure that our heat uh, flux and heat conduction process hasn't blurred out the, the details. We're looking for possible leaks and problems with the sealing area. So the distance between the sealing area and that proximity sensor was 40 inches and from the sealing machine all the way to the camera was about 60 inches. So now that we have determined which camera to use, the A615 with the 640 by 512 pixel resolution, we have to now take a look at where do we place the camera for the ideal inspection location like we discussed previously. For that, what we have done is sealing a bag and taking actually a video of the bag seal cooling down. So we have just placed a sealed bag onto the conveyor um, at the exact working distance that we had determined before, right about where the proximity sensor was, and just left the bag there standing still while we we're recording a thermal video. And the outcome of this test um, are these image sequences, and we have um, extracted certain points in time. Um, and what we can see here is at zero second, that's right when the bag was placed, two seconds, five seconds, eight, 12, 15, and 20. And what we can see um, clearly is that we have this double line feature in the ceiling area. And even you know after two seconds, it's starting to you know blur already a little bit. Five seconds blurs quite a bit, but eight seconds, we have a hard time making out those double line features and it gets worse from there. So what we have determined is that really the ideal uh, point in time to inspect is um, very early on, ideally no later than about five seconds um, after the sealing process has completed. So the next test that we have performed on this bagging line is a temperature decay test. What this is, is to monitor the temperature decay over time in the same spot on the ceiling area. This will tell us how the temperature cools down and at what rate. So in this instance, we have used three bags, um, selected a region of interest on each bag, and essentially monitored the temperature decay over time. And these um, cycle one, two, and three are different bags. And you can see that the temperature overall is decreasing over a period of um, 20 seconds, which we have monitored. And um, if you remember from, from a couple of slides before, at about eight seconds, everything was completely brought out and you can kind of see the, the decay kind of slowing down and becoming a little bit more noisy, which means that the, the temperature um, energy has dissipated to a level where it has equalized and therefore we can't see anything anymore and it has become very blurry. Uh, another interesting thing to see here is right after um, the beginning um, of the cycle, we can actually see a little increase in temperature and that is most likely due to um, something deeper in the material, such as the adhesive that has been heated and the heat is still rising to the surface and then it's basically cooling down further here. So this is kind of an interesting test that um, also helps us analyze what's going on based on the material thicknesses and the thermophysical properties involved and everything else we need to know. So this illustration is to demonstrate what happens over time when using a pass-fail algorithm 
to look for faulty seals. Um, as we have learned that the longer we wait after the sealing location, the more the thermal energy kind of blurs from the hotter region into the colder region. So if we had a faulty seal, meaning a gap where there's little or no energy, meaning a cold spot, um, and we would perform some image processing on this um, represented here by the red region. The red region is basically saying this is this portion of the seal is good. It has sufficient energy in it. And um, here would be a gap. And this could be a, you know, a weld problem or something like that, or a crease in the material or something, or a missing adhesive. Any, any sort of things like this could cause this fault. And um, if my camera location um, has been selected properly, I would have no issues detecting this fault because I could see, hey, here's a discontinuation um, of the energy, therefore that's a fault. Waiting a little bit longer, that energy will slowly spread from the hotter regions to the colder regions. Since the fault is cold, um, we essentially have a bleed in to this area and all the way um, to further down the line, um, again, if I placed the camera in the wrong location and waited too long for the inspection, I may miss the faulty seal because the hot regions have completely bled into the cold regions and um, my system will just deem this as an okay seal, although it is not. So this is very important to understand and it's very important to have the right knowledge about what happens with this particular application and also where to place the camera with respect to um, where the heat is being applied. So let's talk about trigger jitter. What is trigger jitter? So in our case, we have mounted a proximity sensor on the conveyor belt to trigger the camera image when the pouch arrives or is in a certain location or certain distance away from the camera. Now, these pouches are somewhat deformed sometimes and they don't have a very defined edge so therefore it's somewhat hard to trigger at the exact same location all the time on these pouches so this creates jitter or uh, a timing uncertainty and therefore the image appears always in a slightly different spot um, you know with respect to the thermal image so how this looks like um, is this we have uh, the camera here actually turned 90 degrees on its side um, but you can see here between image one and image six, there's some um, significant um, uncertainty in terms of the position that we might expect where the seal appears. So that is something we need to look at too in any packaging application really to see, okay, how reliable um, is our trigger um, with respect to telling the camera when to shoot um, and so that we can adjust our inspection algorithm to account for that and maybe we have to implement some sort of a tracking algorithm that first finds the bag, then finds the seal, and then performs the algorithm um, to determine pass-fail. So putting this all together, in the end, really what we need to develop after the feasibility study has been proven out um, is an automated detection algorithm to determine pass-fail on a, on a sealing area. So what we have done here is we, we are looking at um, a thermal image of the bag. This is actually a, a deemed good seal. We have tested this by a destructive test by pulling several seals apart and making sure that the weld is strong um, and there's no gaps in the seal. And our image processing um, creates actually a threshold for the energy that needs to be in the seal um, to determine that the seal is strong. And this is represented by this um, red blob that we have here. Um, so if we take a look at um, failing seals for different reasons, we have something that we have artificially created here is uh, sealing time is too short, where we just messed around with the ultrasonic welding machine and instead of, let's say, welding for a second, we just dialed it down to 750 milliseconds or a half a second, and then uh, we're not getting enough energy in, and this um, results into um, a smaller blob and kind of like fragmented or often of portions here. Um, another example is here. Um, we also have a misalignment that we created where we have just skewed the mechanics a little bit intentionally to see what would happen. And we have a heat concentration up here. Um, and then the rest of the seal is rather cold. So then the result image looks like this.
And here we have created a typical failure mode, um, which the customer told us is um, when the corners are folded over of the bag, um, which then creates a lot of uh, friction and pressure on one corner and all the heat is getting concentrated in that corner, but the rest of the seal really doesn't get any heat um, put into it and therefore it stays cold and weak. So these are all examples of failure modes and um, with our algorithm, we can then determine, okay, what sort of shape do we expect? How much energy should be in there? Um, and also what is the shape um, of a good looking seal and then we can develop from that a, a good pass fail algorithm that can be used reliably in a fully automated seal inspection solution. So besides all the other issues that I have already addressed in this presentation, there can be additional challenges with package sealing applications. For instance, the emissivity of the material needs to be considered. The emissivity is really the ability of a material to radiate heat. That could be impaired by some sort of coating on the material or aluminum foil, anything that's shiny. And that could lead to issues where we can't really properly measure the heat signature of the sealing area. Another thing is transmission. That is commonly found in materials with thin plastics, um, which is often used um, in packaging materials, where we can actually see through partially um, the, the packaging material and see what's inside it or behind it rather than actually measuring the surface temperature that we're interested in. Um, another issue could be motion blur when we have packages coming down a conveyor line very fast. So the camera um, looks at things and, and everything gets blurred um, because of the motion component of it. Um, the aspect ratio of ceiling error versus ceiling width, we, which we have already covered in this presentation to make sure that we have enough camera resolution on the ceiling area. Um, there could be ambient temperature fluctuations from winter to summer sort of thing, messing with our results. And we can also experience process drift where maybe the ceiling line takes about 20 to 30 minutes or so to stabilize its temperature before we can see reliable result doing the actual ceiling operation. So as you can see, um, it's not going to be an easy task necessarily. So make sure you're working with a, a knowledgeable company that understands what they're doing. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me the thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.